So today I'm teaching you how to knit a tubular selvage. A tubular selvage essentially is a selvage that looks a little bit like an I-cord. It's a lovely neat edge um, that it works really well for scarves but you can use it on anything really that requires a firm edge. I'm creating a selvage of five stitches so you can see one, two, three, four, five and I've got my marker and likewise on this edge too. Um, in between I'm working a moss stitch which some of you might call a seed stitch um, just so you can get a good comparison between the edging and the main body of the work. So something to remember with the um, tubular selvage is that for the first five stitches of the work um, you will always be working those stitches and um, whether it's a knit or a purl depending on which side you're on um, and for the last five stitches you will always be slipping those and your yarn will be either at the front of the work or the back of the work depending on which side of the work you're on. So we're on the front of the work right now so I'm going to knit into these first five stitches you can see my yarn is over here because I've just slipped these my yarn is over here so in order to prevent a long float happening there I'm gonna have to knit the um, first couple of stitches here relatively tight so give the yarn a good tug so here give it a tug and the second one just give it a good tug and I just pull this cast on edge as well just to sort of encourage the tube to form. Now I'm going to slip my stitch marker and work in the stitch pattern that I'd already established here so in my case it's the moss stitch. Okay, so the last five stitches, if you remember me saying earlier, I'm slipping those. Um, because I'm working on the right side of the fabric currently, I'm just going to slip them with the yarn at the back. So, one, two, three, four, five, and these are all slipped purl-wise. Okay, so again, we're working these first five stitches, not, not slipping them. And this time, because we're on the wrong side of the fabric, we're purling them. So you can see my yarn is over here. So in order to prevent a large float, we're going to have to pull those stitches relatively tightly. So give it a good tug. It should be fine. It evens out nicely over time. Okay, and I'm just going to give that a tug to encourage it. Right. Now I'm knitting my stitch pattern. Okay, and remember you're always slipping those final five stitches. In this case, my yarn is at the front and I'm slipping them purlwise. And it is as simple as that. So it's just a matter of repeating the two rows I've just shown you. Um, and I'm just going to do some more knitting so you can see a larger piece to see what the finished salvage looks like. So you can see here that I have knitted um, a fair amount more of my uh, swatch here and you can get a good example of how the tubular selvage is going to work out. So moss stitch in the middle and then tubular selvage on the edge. And if I just flip over my swatch you can see how that edging um, creates a tube over the edge of the fabric. So that's double sided, it's super neat, looks very professional I find. and. Um, 
I don't know, it just has a nice sort of substantial feel to it. Um, something to bear in mind is that you obviously are knitting more rows in this section here of the work than you are here. Um, in some cases it doesn't matter, I mean here it actually seems to be behaving, however in some cases you'll find that there is a bit of sort of rucking here, um, and a way to resolve that would be to block the swatch, um, or whatever it is that you're knitting, and just sort of stretch out these edges, um, that tends to do the trick and it'll lie nice and flat again. But as you can see, in some cases, like this swatch, it's not necessary at all. So I hope this has been helpful, and um, if it has, I'd love it if you could subscribe and um, share it with your friends as well.